What is up, everybody? It is Joe Granado checking in from the Nestmaker Studios on uh, this May the 4th be with you. Uh, I wanted to show you guys something that we've been working on for version 4.5, which is, you know, we there's just a few things we are still trying to crank the bolts down on until we can release a, a beta for you. Um, but there was a cool thing that we were working on with the RPG module um, for Gamer Quest. Uh, and I liked it so much, I ended up adapting it for Mystic Searches, and then I liked it so much that I ended up sort of adapting a method that's very similar for version 4.5 of Nest Maker. And I wanted to show it to you guys really quick. Uh, what this is really, what's really important about this is bang, uh, Nest, the banks on Nest, the memory banks are very small, and Nest Maker by default, you know, regiments. Uh, banks for certain purposes like these banks are used for graphic data these banks are used for music and sound effects this bank is used for uh, tech npc dialogue but what happens when you have a really text heavy game now some people have found really clever ways to to work around uh, the limitations and to put text in various banks but it's a little bit grueling and we wanted to create a easier way that you'd be able to spread your text out on multiple banks i mean it's a big difference uh if you're you have a game like legend of zelda where you know your trick, you know, Dodongo dislikes smoke, and that's the length of your string, versus Dragon Warrior 4, where you have paragraphs of text throughout a, a really large-scale game. So, you know, depending on the style of game uh, that, that you're creating, you might want a whole different, uh, dramatically different amount of text. And not only that, but you you might have text that only appears, you know, once or twice in the game. Like you might want to have a string of text for a map location that you're on, right? And you've only, and it's, it's only a matter of letters and it's not really NPC dialogue and you want to handle it from a different bank for some reason. Anyway, uh, I want to show you uh, a couple of the macros that we've worked in. And all I have is a, a very simple uh, module that I, I put together. I, I put a character in there and I just made a couple of, of buttons. Uh, uh, you can press the B button to activate a text string so we can see how it works um so if you look at uh this game file right now what i've got is uh i'm going to create some text uh let's create a couple of text strings here so i'm just going to call this this is text string one it is npc text and then maybe i'll do more wow this is cool so that's text zero basically uh text one i'll put um this is text one more um can you believe it okay so now i've got two different text strings right and we're not even worried about the groups right now if you wanted to assign groups that they're assigned to your uh, when a room is loaded the the text gets populated into the your text groups and stuff we're not even talking about that we're, we're talking about directly writing text uh based on um where it is in memory so uh what i have is i created a script just called draw some text and if you look i applied it to my B button. So um, on my controller number one in my main game, if I press B, it draws some text. It runs this script right here. And so we've got a macro here. And if I look at the macro, draw a box, this is the actual macro right here. And you can see what it does. And we're not going to worry about it so much here. I'm just going to tell you what the arguments are. Your X value, your Y value, which relates to your HUD boxes. So that's this guy right here. Um, oops. Uh, your width and your height applies to that same box, your NPC box that you created. Um, and then there's two different modes. There's text underscore NPC and there's text underscore free. And we're going to talk about what each of those are. Uh, first, let's take a look at text NPC. So text NPC means that it is drawing from this text right here, this this bunch of text. And uh, if I go back over here, I can see what it's doing. It's saying I want to go uh, to text and uh, NPC, I want to use that mode. And I want to draw text string zero, which which string or index are we using? So text string zero uh, is this one right here. So we would expect to say this is text string one, uh, I'm gonna make this zero This is text string zero. Um, it is NPC text. Wow, this is cool. And this one should say this is text string one. Okay, great. So I'm gonna export and test this. Oops, my other monitor here. Here we go. So I got my little character here. If I hit my B button, this is text string zero. It is NPC text. Wow, this is cool. 
and then it automatically closes at the end of the text. So awesome, that's great. If I go back over here and I say draw some text and I change this to one, save it. Uh, it's an easy way to, to manually control what text string is showing up with a draw, with a box creation. So this is text one, can you believe it? So just by changing this value right here, this value is represented by these values here. So if I, now these are, these are in uh, decimal, not hex, but this is easy enough. Um, this is text 23. Wow. Okay, so text 23, now I gotta make sure that I'm writing this in, instead of in hex, in decimal. So um, now this is gonna call text string 23. And it's text 23, wow. So pretty easy to do that manually and, and call this the string that you want. And you could have conditionals like, you know, if, if, if this happens, pull this string. If that happens, pull that string. And that's, uh, that's part of a way to get around um, the way that we handle NPC uh, dialogue with the text groups. So if you wanted like multiple, te like eight different NPCs on the screen at one time, here's a way that you could handle it. Or if you wanted like, and you know you walk into a room and, it, and it, it draws a box and it gives you text but it doesn't count against your npc text or a shop system that was different or whatever this gives you an idea of some of the things that so one of the ways you could do that but there's one more huge thing um so what ends up happening with this if i were to show you what's happening in um bank 19 which is where the text is it is creating this file which has these labels, text zero, text one. And um, there's a big lookup table uh, that I don't have open right now. Yeah, here it is. Big lookup table that points to those. So it's you're really getting sort of an offset. When you are using text uh, zero, for instance, it's looking at this, these two as a low byte and a high byte of an address, which is pointing it to this label. And this is what it's actually creating. Okay, that's cool. That's how it's always worked. But but what happens if you want to create text in like an obscure bank? Like you you don't want it to be like you need overflow room. You don't want it to be in uh, text bank uh, with all the rest of the stuff because you run out of space. You know, there's only so much space that uh, that the nest can hold. So let's utilize another bank uh, to to actually write some text. I'm gonna open up my nice and organized script settings. And I'm gonna just pick an arbitrary but empty bank here. And okay, I'm going to create some text here. I'm gonna call this my dumb text. And I'm going to create manually some text. Uh, so I'm gonna say, uh, uh, this is what your, if you look back at this, this is what it does by default when you type into this here. When you type into text, it this is what that's what is actually spitting out. It's spitting out this oops, spitting out this stuff. I'm manually creating this. Hello. And you can see why this takes forever, right? World. And then I'll, I'll make that an end. Um, actually, I might have to make this a break. There we go. That way I make sure I have enough room. So hello world, I'm gonna save this. Now, the problem is, is I'm in a new bank and I'm, uh, I've got this arbitrary uh, uh, label. It's not one of these defined labels that that it, that it creates when my game creates it's not linked up to the underlying engine it's something that i did on my own completely on my own well what i can do really easily remember that we're in bank 1a so what i'm going to do very easily is i'm going to come back over to my draw some text and instead of writing text npc i'm going to use the mode text free and now I need a label. I need to know a label. And the label is this right here, my dumb text. So I'm gonna write my dumb text. And the last thing I gotta do is I have to tell it, I want to go to, I'm gonna, I'm sorry, switch 
bank. Nope, sorry. Not gonna switch the bank. I'm gonna load 1A and I'm gonna make it my text bank. And this is gonna do all the bank switching for me. So that's all I've gotta do is I've gotta tell it, okay, I'm not gonna use my normal bank 19 as my, which you probably wouldn't know, it does that automatically. I'm not gonna use my normal text bank as my text bank. Temporarily, I'm gonna use this as my text bank. And I wanna make sure I'm in text free and I'm gonna write this text right here. So let's check that out. Compiles. And now, Hello world. So that's a really, really cool thing, a, a way that we can, you know, you can really start to dive into what you can do with the text and all that stuff. Um, and again, if I want to go back to the other way, I, I erase this text bank stuff. I take this and I put NPC and now I give it the number that I want it to call. And now I'm right back to where I was with, uh, using the NPC engine that comes default. There you go. So I'm gonna show that, uh, I'm gonna show you one of the cool things that uh, we could do with that working and another, uh, a slight, uh, a small addition to that inside draw text box. You have end of box actions. Now these are sort of ones that are by default that are gonna come with the engine. But um, for instance, for Mystic Searches, I created another end of box action and that is to open a supplemental box. This came about when I was working on uh, Game Request and I realized for uh, RPG, a lot of times like when I'm on the overworld and I press my action button, it pulls up a menu. Like, what do you want to do? Do you want to uh, use a spell or do you want info or change your, check your status or, you know, equip or whatever, all those things that come up. I want that then to trigger another box to open, but I wanted that one to go away completely and then open another box. Um, so that way uh, I could reuse some of the RAM uh, memory where it was storing those values to. Um, so I, I made a end action routine for that box where it, when it goes completely away, it triggers opening of the box. And I can show you that with Mystic Searches. Uh, give me one second. I'm going to close this down, open up Mystic Searches, and I can show you that real quick. Hold on one second. All right, so this is uh, the first screen on Mystic Searches. And, you know, you've got a HUD bar here. You've also got a uh, text area. So when I talk to somebody, um, you can see it creates this box that, that is this size, but there's a lot of boxes that pop up, uh, inventory boxes, map screens, stuff like that. And so um, I needed a, another method, and there was a method where I had where you held the select button down, and then depending on the buttons that you pressed, it opened different windows. Uh, but what I did away with that, it was a little bit confusing to, and very unintuitive. Now if you press the select button, I get a choice of pop-up, and you can see that's different size from the, the NPC dialog. And then when I choose one, it creates a, another different sized window. And I hit select and we come out of there. But what you notice is um, this little window right here will actually go away completely before it opens up the next window. And this is uh, using that same method um, that I was just showing you guys, uh, very something very similar uh, to what we're implementing with 4.5 and what we're at, and Game Request being the sort of the idea given the project that gave us the idea to do that. So um, very kind of very cool. Uh, I hope you guys are excited about that. I know there's so much there's so many little things that we're excited about for those, especially for those of you who are doing advanced things or that it was a little bit hard for and want a more streamlined, easier way to start to dig into more advanced features. Uh, hopefully this version is gonna be that version for you and, and really inspire you to get under the hood and start playing. So anyway, just wanted to share that with you guys and uh, super excited. We are so close to the next version release, which means then we can start talking about bite off and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with this year. Uh, and I'll talk to you all soon.